Hi everyone, I'm Amina Ashman and I'm representing the Poetry and Spoken Word community. I'm one of the creatives today that will be sharing some poetry with you all. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Barani Bursama, the campaign that I am using this platform to share some of my art with. Um, stressing that this is a fundraiser awareness um, campaign towards Mercy Malaysia's COVID-19 pandemic fund. So donations are much appreciated and you can do them through LaunchGood. I'll put the link on my page and there will be a link on Barani Bursama's Facebook page as well. So I'm sharing with you all a fresh collection of my poems that I've tailored specifically for this share today. And I'm really hoping that it would inspire you, uplift you, maybe allow you to escape for a bit, get transported to somewhere else. For starters, I'm doing this from Melbourne, not Malaysia. And rather than bringing in the impending winter cold to all of you back home, I thought I'd reconnect with my tropical roots and bring in some of that greenery and humidity to my poetry today. So before I begin, I would like to do a short welcome to country to acknowledge that this poetry set was written and is being performed on the lands of the Bunurang and the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. I hold deep gratitude for being granted the space and opportunity to benefit from and contribute to the rich culture of the storytelling. And I would also like to pay my respects and hold right relationship with all the ancestors and the living consciousness of my homeland. And I also feel like a bit of that consciousness lives in this crystal that I'm holding up in my hand right now. And I'd like to share with all of you, Big Boy. <laughs> Big Boy is my very special crystal guardian. It's a smoky quartz crystal that comes from deep in the hills of Kinta Valley. So I feel like I'm holding up a piece of my ancestry here. And it was gifted to me by a late geologist and my mum's friend, Auntie Yvonne. And I just want to bring a little bit of home back to me as well. So before sharing my first poem with you all, I'd like to set uh, a short intention stating why I want to do this creative share for you all today. And I'm going to put it in another crystal. And this is a malachite. I bought it in Melbourne, but there's something about its greenery that takes me right back to the rainforests in Malaysia. So I thought it was fitting to have this around me right now as I, as I share this with you all. And it's a crystal that's connected to the matters of the heart when it comes to crystal healing. So I thought it was quite fitting for the time we're in right now, where we're all sort of trying to improve our emotional well-being. So I hope it brings you a little bit of peace as well. My poetry loves to play in the realms of fantasy and spirituality and love and healing, and that's why I have all these crystals around me. I'm really passionate about heart healing, and I think this time that we've been in lockdown has really given me the opportunity to reflect on how I've been so supported and blessed. And my family have really shown a lot of that support. So they've been integral to my sense of comfort and they're the reason why I can be up here to share this poetry with you all right now. And so this, this whole set list is really a dedication to my family back home and I really hope they enjoy this. I get a big gut flutter when I feel like I can bring my earthwork back up to the equator. In this space, I set the intention to embrace and anchor my role as poet and performer and present myself as a light and love bringer to my motherland. Please grant me a little bit of space to carve out my own creative jungle in this place and bring forth my personal poetry and performance art which comes out of my highest of hearts. I'll put the aesthetic of less is more aside because I'd really like to experience a bit more of a colorful ride. And when I become self-conscious about overdoing it, I'll catch myself and pose this question instead. Did creation stop in its tracks and say, I think that's enough for today? It's easier said than done to avoid gilding the lily when you come from a land 
with a lack of minimalism and a richness of ritual and ceremony. When I tune into my motherland, when I tune into Malaysia, I like to ask myself, what do I think and what, what do I feel? And the first thing that comes to mind is leaves, a never-ending greenery in essence, spores and seedlings and flowers, lots and lots of flowers. And when I think of Malaysian flowers, I'm automatically transported back to my grandparents' um, holiday place up in the cool hills of Jandabai. So I thought it's fitting to start this set with a poem about what Jandabai was to me. Hibiscuses in my hair and hands, pretty smocks running across long grass, those seven stepping stones across that pond, the fear of falling into muddy creeks that we fished at but could only find tadpoles in and being in heavy denial that they would one day become frogs. Bubble baths in the bathroom with parrots, the rocking chair on the balcony that overlooks waters of pink and white the lilies I mistook for lotuses, Mama and Papa's purple wedding dais in the dark house, the big biawats and the green-eyed chichats, the rosy torch ginger and orchids and the dangling heliconias along the driveway, hammocks on hot evenings and sleeping bats on ceilings and the smell of squished starfruit, a mouse at a durian plant that made me jump on my grandma's back one day after following her white hair and wheelbarrow, going from fruit tree to fruit tree. A low key initiation passage for all potential family members to go through. Mosquito bites on cheeks and the bottoms of our feet. Mango juice joy boxes sucked on by little explorers and leeches playing hide and seek in our clothes. The shrubs of spider lilies after a rain late night scrabble in the living room, monkeys, milkshakes, mangosteens, and the one-eyed crocodile encircling his grandchildren around the four-poster bed. This one-eyed crocodile, my grandfather, has been a huge supporter of my poetry. And so naturally, I'd love to do a poem about him for you all today. This is called Love Unearthed. The silver-haired traveler brought home treasures, semi-precious minerals for his granddaughter to fall in love with and place into her little hands. How many grandfathers gift their granddaughters a desert rose, which I now know are a cluster of selenite crystals, a careful caress of moonbeams sitting still on my childhood windowsill. Gentle, like your silent salt of the earth quality, staring up into the eyes of our moon, the same one that guides you into your spiritual swoon of nightly writings. Your literature is lilted with your love for family, faith, and the fertile world. Your words carry the magnitude of rubies when they reflect their sheen because you reflect out what you've seen in rays of awe, abundance, and appreciation, in hues of what glistens for you from the ways you listen to the reverberations in your world. Against the noise, you hear its subtle signals and pen its poignance into your prose and poetry. I hold in my palm now the rock adorned with semi-precious garnets and clear quartz. I used to find it too big to hold, it hid in the glass table of my bedroom. This rock I haven't picked up in 10 years now jitters against the sunset as I tilt my hand up and down, catching glints of light in between the red rust. The rock remains beautiful 10 years on, and I now place the rock over my sternum to perceive art over my arteries, and there's something voracious in the energy of this stone against me. The grains in this mineral bear the breathings of my heart, giving off the frequency of gratitude. For I'm grateful for the gem of a grandfather like you. And like a gem you brought to light, the poet in me too. I mine in a trove of memories for more ways to express you. 
All I keep unearthing is love. Thank you. And from rocks and crystals, I'd like to move back to the flowers. So within the compound of my grandparents' house in Jandabai lies this white house, this beautiful dedication from my grandfather to my grandmother. And it's this art gallery that has this exquisite collection of mother and child sculptures from around the world. And to me, this white house is an expression of art and love and earth and fertility. So I just want to take myself there for a moment, if you'll bear with me. I just want to see this white house and the gardens of love around it, the birds of paradise and the heliconias, and in the center, my grandmother, with her gardening gloves and her hat, walking around with her grandchildren. This next poem is about this beautiful grandmother of mine. And last year she underwent a very serious operation. And while she was in there, I felt like writing poetry. And it was a sort of stream of consciousness way of writing which I've distilled into this poem. And for me, it was, it was a way of connecting with her from being so far away and sending this transmission of hope. So this, this is an excerpt of what I wrote down in those three hours last year in April. And this is called Growth. To the woman ahead of her every child on Netflix having an operation right now. To her green heart and green thumbs. I'm sending you some emerald green light from my bedroom. It's your little petal. I'm wearing your gardening gloves into the operating theatre now, coming through the doorways of the hospital to hold your scrabble playing hands. From my soul rose to yours, I send you fragrance, even though you're the one that's constantly in flower. We've got this, granddaughter to grandmother. Let me hold your petals for you as you go through the stage of getting stronger, and I promise you'll come out of surgery feeling a lot lighter. And all your flowers, all the flowers you've grown, they're holding you up now, supporting you and grounding you instead. Every one of your petals and every one of their dewdrops. Your whole garden is guarding you, Aurora, sleeping beauty. Your gardens are holding secret meetings. They are speaking to one another. And I can't stop hearing the symphony of sincerity for you from all of the flowers, all of the plants, from all of your gardens. Can you hear the coherence of care between the heart and the soil, the lilies and the leaves? Your gardens have got you, and all your pot plants on your balcony too, all of them have their leaves intertwining and their flowers on the tippy toes as they call out to you. You've placed us out in the sun, and now let's collect all of her rays and thread them back into you one by one to balance out your current unraveling. They pray for a lilt of spring to start seeding in you. Hibiscuses hold harmonic vibrations of hope. They've all got you. We've all got you. Heal, feel, heal, feel, heal, feel. The flower of life turns her wheels. Baby steps are blooming inside you. And let that emerald light glide in like a strong piano melody, the kind you love to hear on Downton Abbey. Let this lilt around where your ovaries used to be. There is still a garden inside of you. I'm holding space for you in my own cervix too. The plant kingdom bows down to your beauty, for you know this to be true, for you are beauty. Never burden. You are beauty. Thank you. And I thought it would be nice to move from one generation to the next. And so naturally, this next poem is going to be about my mother. And I'd like to take this opportunity to wish Happy Mother's Day to her. 
This is a rebirth of a much older poem that I wrote in my teens called The Heliconia's Lover. Da 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 During June showers, the spirit of love sang itself into sparks of prayers that dew dropped and wandered along balanced rainbows and weaved its way into waterfalls of moonstone and turquoise tinted veils till it found a trail that led to the lungs of heliconia flowers and arched across its smooth red canvas, dreaming with bright, bold streams until she gleamed human enough to forget her own golden dreams. She will be as gentle as a jasmine's exhalation. My mother will be a beautiful butterfly maiden with smiles coated by sun rays that can even be seen when she decides to squish her face into big rocks for silly family photo opportunities. And she will learn peace through play by hugging trees and looking up into a light that will always love to move her. I wish I had some music right now to accompany this memory, this poetry, this momentary musing, this mystery, this deep yearning to dive deep into her story. Something is inviting me back into this space of being back with her. When I was still a whisper in her ether, learning through her play, and suddenly I'm moving the hands of her younger self, speaking to me for a moment. And I'll stop speaking and listen to what they're teaching. Were we both at one time swimming in between the same waves? And at 27, did we both wonder about the intention of life and the presence of a heaven and the reasons for faith? My mother's a scrapbook ocean that I keep wanting to open, a place I can only uncover from old programs and magazine covers, a couple of newspaper clippings, the one blurry photograph of her gunny sack interpretive pot dance and the story of how she had to handle live goats in Malay adaptations of Egyptian plays back in her theatre performing days. Who was she when she was having fun shape-shifting from maidens into fire spirits on stage, taking full advantage of her sun and Gemini traits? Her own undulations of self-expression will set me in motion to be the artist I've always been open to being. And I wish there were more tapes for me to watch her radiant essence, this rose quartz effervescence, and I'd love to see her dance again, to witness her presence as she paints delicate worlds with her passion-flourished arms and her heart-lit charisma and authentic, grounded charm. My mother has taught me to lend peace through play by hugging trees and looking up into a light that will always love me. My mother is a daughter of the sun, and it doesn't matter that she was born late at night for everyone, everyone has felt her light. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day again, Mama. If there's anything my mother taught me to do, it's to pray and to dance, and maybe we don't do them in similar ways, but nevertheless, my mother taught me to dance and to pray. And for me, dance can be the purest form of unconditional love to oneself. 
Your body is trustworthy. Your body won't judge whatever tension triggers or negativity that's showing up. It acts like a river and a mirror for all these energies that want to be seen and felled and held. Dance is like a mother to me. I dance to ground. I dance to meet myself, to meet compassion and empathy. I dance to open up to me, to my highest heart and that inner emerald light expression inside. I dance to be here now. And this next poem is called Wild Serenity. I pray to be wild, wild serenity. My prayer is dance. And when I move in this state, this trance, I'm reminded of the hold harmony has over me in this embodied space, this open state. I move to mirror the structure of toric fields and DNA spirals, helicoidal. I twirl and swirl and turn like whirling dervishes my mother and father loved, but I'll never be. Dance is an intuitive response of my body to my soul, a moving message that sings to me, our hearts always know, spirit always shows. So move in flow when the source of creation truly strikes a chord with you. Sometimes I dance into a wandering restlessness as I trust the tension running down my legs and those fast and sharp shootings going through my head and I dance out my loneliness. I dance off my jealousy and hold these emotions close to me before setting them free into wild, wild serenity. Body in spirit and spirit in body. I wash sensation over sensation in serums of song after song over me. With a flow of acceptance, I let go and lean into my life force of wild, wild serenity. Authenticity is an arresting energy. And when I dance freely, there's an honesty that flows through my breath to arms that I can't hide, showing me how connected I am to my highest heart inside. When we dance, we relish the ephemerality of our being, of being in the moment. Our movements are too quick for judgment to catch up to, and time can't trap us. As pulses of light and love transcend all our pores, and when we trust in this transient dance, we surrender to the chance for our bodies to be in contact with a sensuous and playful world that dances to the rhythms of the universe. Some people like to say multiverse, and I think that's quite beautiful to imagine that we're all dancing in between songs. Who doesn't love a little more expansion? A chance to expand my heart again, dissolve fear and insecurity, pain and confusion. I dance to give it over, to give it over to divine intervention. And leap into the laws of light and let passion and compassion in to perform her solutions. The vaccine we truly need right now is a love transfusion. Thank you. The only public dance drama performance I was involved in back in KL was a musical production called Thot Rimao, where I played one of the Dayangs to a mythical bird Jin Tayu. And back then I already knew there was this element, this essence of tropical mysticism that would always want to come through. And it's coming through again with this next poem that I'm sharing with you. And I call this Equatorial Baby, misses the warmth. I'm an opportunity for esoteric elegance. I'm a misty pop-up rainforest festival with year-round humidity in my heart. I know I don't have to depart to feel the tropics that I'm a part of. I am as strong as a gleam I've seen in the eyes of a queen who has lost her youngest son I am as strong as a gleam in the eyes of this queen when moths of yellow, white and black surrounded the grave of her beloved one. 
I come from the land where my ancestors dropped their crowns into rivers and made deals before their reigns with genie kings so human beings and water spirits could live in peace again. And rulers await for royal daggers to choose them before ascending their thrones, a land where it's known that teardrops of dragons are held sacred in secret, where consorts are graced by sunkit and serpent armbands of gold instead of fascinators and fur hats in the cold. With year-round humidity in my heart, I know I don't have to depart to feel the tropics that I'm a part of. All I need to do is tilt my head up towards my higher self, to my earth angel mother on a continent nearby, and my sea eagle father in the ninth dimension sky. I tilt my head up to let the tips of my tresses touch the warm silver rivers again. And I evolve into an emerald empress, branching off from my roots in the Malayan archipelago, and my beauty works her way from the ground up as I ground and grow into the woman that you all know. I reverberate with an endless charge of positivity. That's what happens when you're born in the land of lightning energy. Thank you. This next poem is called Divine Mother. I've noticed in my social media circles right now, there's a lot of talk around facing up to your fears and going within and reevaluating where you are at life. And I think it's beautiful that we have that space to reflect. But I also think sometimes it's necessary to just sit in this state of not knowing where you're going next, and I think that's okay. I've definitely experienced a lot of inertia and unknown, unexplainable sorrow and feeling of not knowing where to direct my attention anymore. And when this happens to me, I like to imagine being held in the ground. If I don't know where to place my energy, I bring it right down. I've been told many times by the religion that I've grown up with that the greatest battle of mankind is not one across land, but one that only the person experiencing it understands, that terrain between your mind and your heart's plan. I can feel the toil as I move back into the dark soil. My heart is held in divine Mother Earth's arms, drinking in the medicine from her roots of seclusion. You can give me your darkness, you can give me your light, she says. Give me all your secret songs. No one needs to see or feel the love that births between us, only you. My embrace forces no shadow work upon you. It's simply a chance for you to sigh. Nothing needs to be brought up into the sky, into the light here. Nothing. Beauty, you are bare in your truth as you choose to simply be and breathe. She listens. Her ever-evolving loom of creation crafts song after song, and I am held by her as she encourages my emotions to flow along and out of every cell and back into her wise womb, a nest accepting every one of my wounds, taking them into her as trinkets, transmuting them into treasure, like a magpie mother acting gracefully under pressure to create a school concert costume for her chick daughter. Divine Mother Earth vibrates with a mercy that matches the truths in our hearts. In Divine Mother Earth's arms, there is no projection, only protection. Let me hold you, child, as you wonder, as you wane, as you wail, as you weep, either awake or as you sleep. Let your tower moments happen under my trees. Thank you. And in contrast to the last poem, this next poem is called Unearthing.
I am embodying a new colored light, like a firebird rising up at night, and the hue of my new feathers feel like the ember tides of lanterns we used to lift and let go of on a beach in Phuket a couple of new years ago. Collectively as a family, we rose to the occasion to send up our prayers and watch them drift across the Indian Ocean. I've risen to the occasion to lift up and let go into the unknown. I lift up and let go with surrender and trust that I will find the next steps for flying back into the beauty way and soar with the swift secrets of sun rays. Let's lift up and let go. Let's lift up and let's go. Let's let go and let grow. Let's let go and let's grow. May all the seeds that we've planted sprout from the hidden workings of time, light, and space. Let's now embrace a blossoming breakthrough into abundance, like the pitcher plant creepers and vines that caress and climb, nourished by giving trees, nourished by sunshine. A canopy of interconnection that gives everything over to the divine. And may we dance a stronger dance with the ones that give us a chance to, the ones that celebrate our life, see our light and move us back into our gardens of our own passion and delight. It's invigorating to feel sunrises awakening within our souls, our bodies and our minds, stretching out like the potential of a paradise close by. My welcoming in, not walking away, wild, wide-eyed heart is open to seeing more ways she can surrender into love and not surrender to fear. As I allow this month to flow through me with silence and weight in luscious and luminous waves of gratitude, positivity and a crashing resurgence of faith. Thank you. I believe spirit is for everyone and everyone's relationship and interpretation of spirit should be valid and beautiful and respected. Light is still light from all its planes of reflections and colors will change depending on your shifts in perception. This poem is called Light is Light and it's about my faith. My faith was often spoken at and not spoken to, and I find it hard to speak of. I struggle to find the right shade of colour to express her multi-dimensional hues. She may not truthfully gleam in the colour of crescent moon beams, and she may find her light closer to rainbows in shamanic dreams. And that does not mean she does not like to sometimes grace herself with blessed verses of purity and peace. In essence, her light is still emerald green. And pure soul transmissions come to her when she seeks without seeking permission, when she relaxes into a lighter action of threading only the resonant chords of culture and tradition into the spiraling of her own spiritual integration. She prefers an unspoken acceptance of her choices and doesn't like them to be compared. She'll choose the private moments she chooses to share, those misty moments between her soul and the subtle air. My faith lives in a home of ease and compassion, where she can be still and breathe, to reflect upon and reimagine and redefine her core and cause for being here. My faith doesn't plan on accumulating guilt or doing rituals out of force, she desires to tune into all frequencies of her soul rose light. She acts out of choice and not out of fright, not out of dogma and expectation, but through my open invitation for her to dance into the truth of her imagination. I know I was given a time slot that overlaps the time to pray Trawe and to Buka Puasa. And it might be a bit of a stretch here, but is there any space in your mind where you might consider this poetry to be a light-hearted, indirect prayer from me, laced with the intention to revere the different spheres of almighty creation? 
I allow myself to feel and respect all intentions and directions of all souls. See, we've chosen our own illusions. Let's not discount our connection as we are breathing love as one circular energy in motion. I'd like to say a momentary prayer of light to all the souls who decide to exit this world tonight. May they enter into whichever rays of heavenly vibrations that keep their souls alight. I believe that when we say goodbye to someone, it's never goodbye. It's always another way of loving that person, that being, that soul, that energy. It never goes away, it just transforms. And this next poem is about someone I've never said goodbye to, and that's my late father. And this is a poem that I wrote on his birthday last year, and it's called Mermaid Hair Comb. I took the part in my birth chart where we apparently said goodbye to one another and turned it into a mermaid comb that I always see you using when you comb infinite love from the stars and into my hair. Combing through my hair with care-filled bliss, unconditional love and my destiny. That's how I've recently seen you and me. You're always combing my hair nowadays. I went to the gym today not to get fit, but to energetically connect with you, to put on some music that we used to listen to from time to time, because I just wanted your sonic swirling roses and hearts to illuminate my mind again. And I know I've got a love and hate relationship with space, but it gets easier when I trust in your grace and in your spirit and your feather messages and your silent ways. And I want to say thank you for holding your daughter up all the time with the strength of the messages you send her from the divine. I know you're a stardust boy and I've had my issues with that before, but I'm grateful now for this galactic love that you always pour into me. No artwork, no material that manifests from my hands can ever compare to what you extend out from your air into my soul. I breathe in this love from you every day. I can feel it because your lungs are no longer collapsed. They are now free since you dissolved eight years ago into love and light energy. All my past pain was purified through poetry and loss taught me heart-centered alchemy. Thank you for your spiritual legacy. Thank you. This next poem is called Light-Hearted Poetry. Poetry is a gift from the divine, art flowing to and from the heart. Our relationship is an enchanting one. The more poetry I conceive, the more of life's poetry I receive. Stories that are shared by me are often infused with love, magic, passion, and beauty. And fantasy loves to merge with reality. And I love to let that be. Fifth dimensional poetry is what I embody, essentially. It's always been my speciality. And what I mean by that is since young. I've used my art to celebrate sensation, symbolisms, and synchronicity that I see and feel and sense to be real on this earth. Connections, signs of spirit through beauty and harmony that radiate and reflect back to me in sweet serendipity. That's the poetry I give away, and that's the poetry that gets back to me. Try and speak to your DNA intimately and tell it to take you back to a love-based reality. Heaven on earth is what we desire. Heaven on earth is what we deserve. Heaven on earth starts from a shift in perception. And if we can shift, we can surely shatter the paradigms of a paradise that doesn't work for everyone, that doesn't work for one another. 
Heaven on earth is a vision that many beings have come into this world to serve. This collective momentum through its many sentient sentiments, forms, feelings, and words is moving faster than the heart rates of hummingbirds. And during this time of physical distance, we are learning to become less resistant to the idea of ideals as our earth heals. Let's listen and listen to the new cracks of light we're all beginning to feel. A new beat in the earth we can all dance to. Start to appreciate and co-create, whether it be through gifting your visions, sharing your ancestral dreaming, offering musical reflections or providing sound healing, leading group meditations or sending positive thoughts, performing courageous deeds or planting saplings and seeds. Heart-led intention is the gateway for you and me to commune with creative ecstasy. And Eden is emerging soft and subtle within the pondering of our planet, hear her rustle and celebrate on this plane the blooming that we've all come back to again. Set that intention and fuel it with your soul's worth and intention to anchor and feel into a newfound love with renewal that's coming through. All of our souls know what to do. This will be my last poem tonight, and it's called One Big Flower. I've decided to replace the word world to flower in my psyche after experiencing a dream that invited me to. How beautiful would it be if the world was to suddenly turn flower and perspectives turned into petals and all of consciousness could be cupped within your hands? If the world was to suddenly turn flower, one big blue and green flower with a crystalline nectar at its core. Imagine if that's how we saw our world. Opening, opening up, and then opening up even more. I'm ready to explore, to seed and plant the sublime and the surreal into every experience I feel. Conscious intimacy, co-creation and self-mastery. I can feel the power from stating what's meant for me and breathe in the blueprints of my highest destiny. It's time to merge. It's time to emerge. I love how spirit shares her signs through the smallest of angels with me. On a day when I could no longer contain the lip quivers of pain that didn't come from the winter wind or cold rain, I was met with gentle glee from a 10 month young baby. I heard this sign on a crowded tram, cozy in her polar bear onesie, Joanna, a crystal child, no doubt, with a chuckling diamond of a smile in her eyes and a grin that told me to get ready for a global surprise, a blessing in disguise. She shared this in secret to me long before quarantine on that crowded tram in 2019 on August the 14th. I choose not to perceive to see this time as a period of impending apocalypse. It's an entirely new beginning, inviting us all into this deep collective heart healing. And one of my cousins said that Big Boy reminds him of a heart, that the top reminds him of the left and the right atrium and the bottom reminds him of the left and right ventricle. And I just thought I'd leave that image with you because we cannot be broken as our hearts are crystals with energy intact, regardless of impact. We shift, we get lost, we shatter, and that doesn't matter because the special combination of pressure and darkness creates a dazzling catharsis as we break down and break through. Remember, our souls know exactly what to do. Trust in the highest heart in you. Thank you everyone so much for listening to my creative share tonight. I just want to extend my gratitude towards 
Jam Track Records, Barani Brasama and Shang Pala for offering me this opportunity to share a bit of my poetry with you all today. And I'd like to remind you that this performance is to raise awareness uh, towards Mercy Malaysia's COVID-19 pandemic fund and donations can be made through Launch Good and I'll be sure to write that link down on my pages and please visit Barani Bursama's campaign Facebook page as well to see all the other beautiful artists and other people from all, all sorts of industries that are sharing their work and their hearts. I'd also like to um, say thank you to all the frontliners of the world and the frontliners in Malaysia that are keeping my family and my loved ones safe. Thank you so much for all the work you do. It is much appreciated. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a beautiful day.